Hello everybody, Jim here and welcome to the channel that aims to be both informative and yes, even entertaining sometimes. Today what I'm going to do is give my take, my analysis on that Nitrox incident. And there's a lot to learn in this incident, so you're going to want to stay tuned and see what you can get out of it. Let's have a look. I had, gosh, uh, 14, 15 points to, to have a look at. So first, uh, looking at the depth here, 75 feet, 23 meters was the target depth of, I suppose, the, the top of the wreck. I'm not sure, I've never been to this wreck. And the MOD of 36% nitrox at 1.4 PPO2 would be 28 meters or 95 feet. So looks like okay for that, just as a quick check for a nitrox incident. Now the next line, so I had two dive buddies. So I made a note to myself, I don't know about you, but if you've been around a while, if you're a dive guide, I'm gonna guess dive guides are all gonna say the same thing as I'm thinking here, but buddies of three, groups of three are traditionally just a disaster. So what's gonna happen is uh, you got three buddies, let's say you have uh, Bill, Ted, and Alan. And what happens is, let, let's say Alan is the, the junior diver, just as an example. So Bill thinks Ted is watching Alan, and Ted thinks Bill is watching Alan. Meanwhile, no one's watching Alan, and you get to the end of the dive and Alan is missing, and Bill and Ted are like, huh? So that, that's uh, what can happen. Third, uh, this is just an interesting point. So 12 meter viz was not great. Uh, this person said 40, 40 feet, 12 meters viz is uh, not great. Wow, that's that's pretty average for where I dive. I don't know about you. I, I'd be not so unhappy with 12 meters of viz in some places I dive. Other places you get 40 meters. Uh, point four, what I have here is 36% nitrox was checked at the shop. Now, unfortunately, here's where uh, the ambiguity starts with this incident. And unfortunately, because this poster didn't expand on that point, we can't say a lot about some facets of this analysis. So checked by who? As you know, for Nitrox, we're supposed to check it ourselves. The diver, the end user is supposed to check it. So this says it was checked at the shop. Worst case scenario, that could mean that person went to the shop, picked up the tank, the shop said, yeah, some guy in the back did check this. It's got tape on it, says 36%, and then the person took the tank and left. So uh, this is going to lend a little bit of ambiguity later on to this event. Five, so upon reaching the wreck at 23 meters, uh, a shortness of breath, experienced a shortness of breath. So th this is interesting, right? So th this could have some different uh, causes. And in the analysis, other people uh, brought up, a lot of posters had, had mentioned this. So one possibility here is a tank valve. Tank valve partially closed. Um, and I've had this happen to myself. And in fact, when it happened to me, it probably kicked in about 23, uh, 24 meters, but that would depend on how closed the valve is. It would definitely be uh, like you, you can't breathe. However, my when it happened to me, what what's going to happen is it's more like a sh it's not really like a shortness of breath. It's like no breath. You're like, like your air is going to stop, right? Uh, is what happened to me. But I guess it could be maybe maybe. However, the thing that that makes me think this is is not the issue is that diver, as you read later, went back to the surface, felt okay, which is what would happen with a tank valve that's not that's not fully open. However he or she came back down uh, and did not experience that problem again and did not mention adjusting the valve. So I would not think this would be a tank valve issue. Uh, B, uh, tank contaminants. Some people mentioned about a tank contaminant, maybe some carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide in there um, from a bad compressor situation uh, not being isolated from the exhaust. That's a good idea because they said that as you would get deeper, the PP uh, the partial pressure of that contaminant would increase, which would increase the effect. That's right on. However, again, like the tank valve, that person mentioned he or she went up to the surface, the the symptom diminished, which is what we would expect, but then came back down and the, the uh, effect did not increase again. So that makes me think it's not a contaminant. CO2 hit, a hypercapnia hit, uh, possibly, combined with D, which is nitrogen narcosis. Um, this is what I'm thinking, right? That that person, they, they mentioned, he or she mentioned it was a slight current. So maybe they weren't super working hard, making a lot of CO2, but we don't know. 
and that is a possibility. So uh, getting down, you know, having a CO2 hit, that is going to cause a shortness of breath. CO2 narcosis does that. And if you combine that with what I had as D, nitrogen narcosis, because for some people, uh, they can experience some pretty serious narcosis at 23 meters. I've had that happen with divers with me. And if there was some panic, something going on that, that was generating CO2, those two things together could definitely cause a shortness of breath. So, so far, this is, this is what sounded good to me. And many posters had said that. And also, makes, makes sense. The person went back up to nine meters. The symptoms uh, leveled off and stopped. And then they got calm and went back down to depth and the symptoms weren't there because they had calmed down, maybe got a, 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 a hold of themselves, right? And as you might have seen in the gases lecture is that our mental state affects how narcosis uh, will affect us. So I had point six, feeling a lack of oxygen, this person said. Uh, I'm afraid this is busted. There, there's no, as many posters said, uh, contributors said, there, there's, there's actually not, not much uh, sensation to feeling a lack of oxygen except just passing out and dying. Uh, so as you, if you, if you might have seen in that gases lecture, 16% um, is the minimum we need, below 16% oxygen or 1.6 PPO2, we start feeling bad. Um, and then at 12%, I think you go unconscious and then at 10% you'll and below you'll, you'll pass away. Yes. Okay. Point seven, uh, what I have here, buddy issues. So despite the standard signals for difficulty breathing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, the person looked at me like he or she didn't know what I was saying. And what I, my note to myself here is what's the standard signal for difficulty breathing? Actually, I wouldn't know. I know I have no air. Uh, that that's a clear one, right? You 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 donate for that person. But what about difficulty breathing? Would it be like this? I mean, I would think maybe the person's choking, had swallowed something, or a piece of the regulator came off and was choking. I'm not sure what I would do for that person. Probably I would offer the air. But certainly I would I would take that person up. But the, I don't think there is. I, and I'm happy to be wrong, but I don't think there is a standard signal for difficulty breathing. So there's there's clearly uh, very understandable that the buddies did not understand what was going on. However, here's a failure of the buddy system. Those people should have gone up together. That buddy should have taken up the person together. So that is a failure of the system here. Okay, I had point eight. What was it? Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> sorry, sorry. So the person, this is this is just in my thing. So the person said they bolted up in a semi-controlled panic. Yeah, I don't know about you, but for me, there's only one kind of panic, and it's pretty much pure panic. Is there another kind? So probably this this person was extremely uh, feeling a lot of anxiety, understandably. Alrighty, nine. What do I have here? I went back down to find the two individuals. So again, back to the buddies of three and the problem here, those buddies should not have let that person go up alone. That was a recipe for disaster. Um, and in fact, there was a, a case just recently in where I dive, uh, Osazaki two years ago, I think now, someone was running low on air, went back and that person was found, passed away later on. So you never know what could happen, should have been with the buddy all three should have gone up together, right, to accompany that diver back to safety. Point 10, what do I have? It seemed like I was sucking on pure nitrogen. All right, now we're getting into the, the more nitroxy part of this event. Impossible. Now, I'm, I'm not a tank mixer, okay? I'm not a tank filler. I'm not a tank mixer in Japan. That's not something that, that people do here generally. It's, it's a shop thing. And... Uh, and especially if there's oxygen involved, right? Oxygen is a very, very classified protected substance here. Um, you cannot do oxygen filling unless you are a licensed facility. And so a partial pressure fill, what you're gonna do is if, if you're starting with, a, with an empty tank, right? You're putting in first, there, there's a recipe, right? You wanna end up with 36% uh, nitrox. You're gonna start off by putting in 
some volume of oxygen. And then on top of that, you're going to put some volume of air, which is 21% oxygen. And those two things mixed together are going to give you the final percent that you want, in this case, 36%. Now, in this case, nowhere in that equation is there pure nitrogen. So no matter what happens with if the person didn't, let, let's imagine the tank wasn't tested at the shop actually, or it was tested mistakenly labeled, and actually it was not nitrox, it was just pure air. That there was no mix actually. Well, in that case, even the worst case scenario, this would have been air with 21% nitrogen. That person could have gone to 23 meters and breathe just fine. So there's no case, no situation where there should have been pure nitrogen in there. And anyway, breathing pure nitrogen, I don't know how long it would take, but maybe a minute or two, you'd, you'd die, right? You, you'd pass out and die. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be struggling on pure nitrogen, not for long anyway. Alrighty, this leads us directly into point 11, which is can gases layer off? Now, as a former chemist, I would have thought no, or not for long, and especially in a, in a pressurized environment. However, there were lots of contributors to this uh, thread on Facebook and on YouTube who said yes, for short periods of time, in their experience, it does happen. And in fact, apparently the Navy manual mentions this. However, once again, I would say two things. Thing one is no matter what, the least oxygen rich layer would have been 21%. So even if it would have layered off, this wouldn't have upset things, right? Also, the tank is tested presumably upright. And you know, you do have the snorkel that, that goes down a bit, but if if that test, if that tank was tested and it was tested at 36%, that means the air had mixed with the oxygen and the homogeneous mixture resulted in 36%. If the tank were in fact tested. Now, if it wasn't tested, we, we could make all kinds of speculation and I don't know what to say about that. But um, in any case, the least oxygen rich layer would have been 21%. Point 12, this is, this is very, <laughs> so what was it? Tank rolling, so tank rolling. This was really contentious. So. Uh, again, I don't fill tanks, but doesn't seem like tank rolling will be a thing to me. Lots of posters said tank rolling is not a thing. There were a few, there were a few posters who said tank rolling is a thing. Your mileage may vary. I don't know what to say on this, uh, but as far as I can, I can see tank rolling is, is not a necessary thing. Well, having a look here, so uh, in this case, I looked up on, on the net. Again, I'm not a tank mixer, but there are apps you could use that will give you the recipe. And so for partial pressure filling 36% nitrox, you're gonna start, if, if you're starting with an empty tank, you're going to throw in uh, 40 bar of oxygen, right? And then you're gonna top it off with 160 bar of air, right? The O2 comes first because generally you want to keep the oxygen as low pressure as possible to avoid that triangle of combustion, right? The heat, right? The pressure equals heat in many situations. Uh, that would mean the lower one fourth would, would have been oxygen. If they didn't layer, it would have been impossible for that tank to test at 36%, right? Because that would, because the oxygen would be very low in the tank compared to the air. So again, either would mean physics were suspended and the tank was not in fact tested. It was just labeled, but yeah, I don't know. So I would say this one is, is debunked um, in terms of tank rolling being uh, a factor here. And again, goes back. We don't know the exact facts about the testing, but if in fact it was text tested at 36%, that says this tank was a homogeneous mixture of 36% nitrox. And also I, I brought up about the uh, another point, so point 13. So were the buddies tanks from the same source? This would kind of reflect on things, uh, but yeah, I don't know about that. But if the, if the buddies tanks were from the same source, you know, this person might've been thinking, well, gosh, why, why didn't my, my friends have these problems as well? Uh, 14, so the new shop owner does not roll tanks like the previous owner. No. Uh, please post up. I'd love to hear more about tank rolling. I don't know. Yeah. So anyway, point 15, my final take. 
Final take in agreement with a lot of folks who posted is this to me seems like a narcotic event. Uh, narcosis possibly with a CO2 hypercapnia aggravation, uh, gas layering, tank rolling, debunked, and uh, other issues, right? The buddy issues and whatnot above. So, all right, that was my take. Uh, I know a lot of you had a lot of the same information as I did. Well done. And uh, personally, I find uh, incident analysis extremely useful. Uh, all of my activities that I do that have risk involved, especially you know motorcycling, I, I, I like to watch uh, YouTube videos analyzing and, and people getting into near trouble and, and finding out what's happening calms me down as a motorcyclist. Dive events are the same way. You know, we can learn from the bad luck and misfortune and poor decisions of other people without paying the price. So these events are not to mock or make people feel little. We're very thankful for the people who have the courage to post up events like this. Let, let's take these events in the spirit of learning that they were contributed to us and let's get everything we can out of it. Okay, thanks a lot. See you safely on the beach next time. Well, Bill might be thinking, oh, Ted is watching Alan. And Alan might be thinking, oh, Bill is watching. <laughs> I mixed up my names. <laughs>